Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at a CPA exam question or a CPA exam simulation that deals with earnings per share, specifically dilutive earnings per share. This topic, dilutive earnings per share, is extremely important on the CPA exam, whether you need to know how to compute basic earnings per share, EPS, you cannot compute dilutive without basic, or you might have to compute dilutive, which is what we will do in this session compute dilutive earnings per share now this question could be a multiple choice for example here i can give you option a b c and d and give you four options or i can give you this question in a form of a simulation just basically asking you what is the dilutive earnings per share and usually it will be part of another simulation basically first i'll ask you to compute basic then compute dilutive, then compute the most dilutive security, so on and so forth. Regardless, you want to be very comfortable with this topic when you sit for the exam. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you understand this problem, once I'm done, if you understand how to solve this problem, if you can pause it right now, compute dilutive earnings per share, in my opinion, you are competent in this topic. Otherwise, let's go over it. But before we start, if you are a CPA candidate or and accounting students, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I am a useful addition. I explain the material differently, as you will see when I solve this problem. I can be a useful addition, that vitamin pill that's going to help you pass the CPA exam, help you understand the material differently. I'm an alternative explanation, alternative resources for you. By doing so, you can increase your grade on your sco score on your CPA exam. You risk, try me, one month of subscription. You find it helpful, you keep it. If not, you cancel. That's your risk. Your potential return is passing the exam. I have helped hundreds, if not thousands of students pass the exam. And I do, ha I do have resources for other accounting courses as well. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and please connect with me on Reddit. So let's go ahead and get started. Adam's company capital structure is as follow. They have 100,000 shares of common stock. They have 10,000 shares of preferred stock, and those preferred stock are convertible preferred. Here it says three slash dot three slash share dividend. It means they pay three dollars per share and it's cumulative. You have to understand here something that although I am not going to say they declare the dividend, the fact that it's cumulative, you have to take into account the dividend. Convertible bond paying nine percent, and we have a one million dollar of bonds. This is what we have. The convertible preferred are converted into 20,000 shares of common stock. The convertible bonds are converted into 30,000 shares of common stock. The net income for the year happens to be 350,000. Compute earnings, diluted earnings per share. Well, the first thing you do before you compute diluted earnings per share, you have to compute the basic earnings per share. And you have to know this like immediately, like basic earnings per share. You have to know it like in your sleep, basically. And what is the basic earnings per share? It's net income, 350,000 minus preferred dividend. What is the preferred dividend? We have 10,000 shares. They're paying $3 per share. That's minus $30,000 divided by the common shares outstanding, 100,000. We found basic is $3.20. And for some reason, my pen is acting up. I guess the tip is not working properly. So this is the basic. So this is basic EPS. Now, why do we need to compute basic? Because we don't know whether something is dil dilutive or not unless we compare it to the basic. Now, here's so we're done with the basic. So you have to do this immediately. And th th they could give you this question, this whole question on the exam, and they could ask you compute basic EPS. And it should take you literally a minute, a minute and a half max to answer a question like this. But they could also ask you about dilutive. And if they do give you a question like this, you should be happy. It means you are doing very well and you are being challenged on the exam. Okay. Now, now we have two potentially dilutive securities. We have the convertible preferred and we have the convertible bonds. The rule is we have to go with the most dilutive from the most dilutive security to the least dilutive. OK, what does that mean? Because certain convertible securities, they might be dil dilutive on their own. But when they are combined with other co potential common stock, which is new common stock, convertible common stock, they may not be dilutive. Therefore, we have to 
find which one is the most dilutive, do the computation first, then look at the remaining shares in that order. Now, how do we how do we make this order? How do we find out which one is the most dilutive to the least dilutive? Well, we have to compute the degree of di dilution. Okay, what's the degree of dilution? It's that incremental effect on EPS. We have to determine the incremental effect on EPS separately for each security. How do we compute this? Well, starting we have two different convertible uh, two different convertible securities convertible preferred stock and convertible bonds so first we're going to compute the degree of dilution for each one separately so let's and the lower the lower the answer the more dilutive that security is let's start with convertible preferred stock well if we convert if we convert the convertible preferred stock we no longer have to pay thirty thousand dollar in preferred dividend those three dollars times ten thousand which is thirty thousand and we'll divide this by twenty thousand so thirty thousand divided by twenty thousand the incremental effect is dollar fifty on eps the incremental effect is dollar fifty now the lower it's the more dilutive it is the lower the incremental effect now we need to find out the incremental effect from the convertible preferred stock now you have to be careful here okay what happened if we convert the bond well if we convert the bond we no longer have to pay interest that's the good news so let's find out how much interest do we save well the bond uh, the bond is a million dollar bond the interest rate is nine percent now bear in mind we are assuming here that the bond was issued as of the beginning of the year on the exam day they might tell you the bond was issued in april or was issued in september so you have to prorate that interest so you have to be very careful again farhatlectures.com this is where i discuss those special topics i don't expect to uh, i don't expect you to see this type of questions on the exam day on the cpa exam I expect to see it on my exams in my classroom but not on the cpa exam day but i just want to make you aware that it could be it could get more complicated now what is a million times nine percent that's ninety thousand well yes i'm gonna save ninety thousand is this the only thing i'm going to save yes except when i don't have the interest i'm gonna lose my i'm gonna lose my uh, i'm gonna lose my tax savings now for the sake of illustration we're gonna assume that the tax rate for the sake of the 30 percent so what's going to happen is this how do you compute how much you're going to be adding to the numerator well you're going to be adding ninety thousand, which is the amount of the interest but it's going to be added net of tax therefore you're going to have to multiply this by one minus the tax rate 0.3 so to find out how much you're going to be saving remember if you if you convert the bond you don't have to pay the interest so you will save this is your saving i'm going to do i'm going to do this in two different color and you need to understand what net of tax is this is an important concept for the cpa exam let me just change the color here because it's important that i illustrate this this is your savings 90 percent 90 000. that's the good news the bad news is once you take the 90 000 of interest expense from your income statement well as a result your taxable income will go up it means you're going to lose some savings on your taxes which is what's the savings you multiply it by one minus the tax rate whatever that tax rate is so all in all your net saving so so the times one minus three it gives you the net savings it means the net savings the net interest saving is sixty three thousand net of tax sixty three thousand okay so the good news is you saved ninety thousand in taxes the bad news is the difference between 19,000 and 63,000, which is 27,000, this is lost in tax savings because you have less deduction, you have less lost in tax saving. I do apologize about my pen. I'm going to have to change the tip. Lost in tax savings. Okay, so your net savings is 63,000. Okay, now we have to do the same thing. We have to compute the degree of the degree of dilution so we have so the total the total is 63000 and they prefer and the convertible bond can be converted into 30000 shares so 63 divided by 30000 is 2 dollars and 10 cent now we notice the again the lower that degree the, the lower the ink the, the lower the number the lower the answer 210 versus 150 the more dilutive that security is therefore common stock is more dilutive so when we start our computation for the 
dilutive earnings per share, we're going to add first the common stock. So let's go ahead and add the common stock first and see what would happen. Okay, so now we're going to go, remember the basic formula here, 350 minus 30,000. Now we're going to be, we're going to assume and we're going to be converting the common stock. So we're going to be net income minus 30,000. I'm going to change colors. So we're going to convert, we're going to add back the 30,000 of dividend, all divided by, let me change color again. I need the pen, not the highlighter. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to get the pen. I'm going to take 100,000, which is the original 100,000, plus I'm going to add 20,000 shares when I convert the common stock. So if I convert the common stock, my earnings per share will become $2.92. This is my dilutive, only converting the preferred. Should I proceed? and convert the bonds. Well, if I if I compare 292 to 210, 210 is lower. It means the bonds are also dilutive. I have to include them. Well, I'm going to have to include the bond now. I'm going to have to include the bond. So I'm going to take 350 minus 30,000 plus 30,000, which is basically what we did earlier. Then I'm going to add to my numerator. I'm going to now change colors. I'm going to add to my numerator the 63,000, the interest net of savings, because that's going to be added to my net income. I don't add 90,000, I add only 63. I saved 90,000 on the interest, I lost 27 on the tax, therefore I add 63, and I'm going to divide this by 100,000 shares of the original issuance plus 20,000 of the convertible stocks, of the convertible stocks. Now I'm going to convertible preferred stock. Now I'm going to add. 30,000 shares from the convertible bond. Now I'm now I'll need to compute this and it should be lower than 2.92 it is 2.75. So my dilutives EPS my dilutives earnings per share is $2.75. So indeed as I expected it was dilutive and it went down. Now if I did this computation and the answer was higher than 2.92 it's anti-dilutive, but it should not be. Then I did something wrong in my math. So I'll have to redo all the math. So first, the degree of dilution. The preferred is more dilutive than the bond. I will start with that. And after I did, I did convert the bond. I did convert the preferred. I noticed that the bond is also dilutive, so I added to the dilutive. Otherwise, if my answer was below 210, if, my, if this answer was below 210, you don't add the bonds because they're no longer dilutive. Okay? Now, at the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you, if you are studying for your CPA exam, I don't replace your CPA review course. I can do that. I, I would love to, but I can't. But I can be a useful addition to that CPA review course. I work hand in hand with your material. In other words, my lessons are aligned to go with your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. Invest in your career. Give me a try for a month. You like it, you keep it, you don't, you cancel, don't shortchange yourself. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.